Hey, welcome ladies and gentlemen to this tutorial. In here, I'm going to show you how to create an employees list or a customers list if you'd like, uh, whatever list of information that you want to keep about users, depending on what that is. So here we'll have a list of those users. And then here it shows us the information, whichever row you click here, we will display over here the full information because here it's going to be brief information and then of course you can click edit and you can click delete to remove any of these rows as you wish and when you click edit a pop-up will come up which i can um, show over here give me a second so a pop-up like this will show up where you can edit the information about that particular user. And then of course, we will have a sign up page that's mandatory. So users can sign up here and also a login page for all those that want to use the system to be able to sign up and log in. Or you can choose to specifically sign up specific people so that only those can use your system. All right, so we're going to use Ajax as well in here and some other techniques uh, that you may not know. So, uh, of course, the source code is in the link in the description. So let's get started. And by the way, this tutorial will be divided into two videos so that I don't cram too much information in one space. So watch this one and then watch the next one. And of course, in order to follow along, you have to at least have some basic knowledge in HTML, CSS, and basics of PHP, because this is not an absolute beginner tutorial. So there are a lot of tutorials on my channel that are beginner level, and I will leave links in the description for you to begin from there if you find any of the concepts in here a little bit advanced. So to get started, we obviously need PHP running on our PC. And to create that, we will download. So go to Google and Google XAMPP download if you don't already have that on your computer. So download that. <coughs> Excuse me. So download that and choose for your system. If you're using a Macintosh, uh, download MAMP instead because this can be a pain on a Macintosh. So MAMP or ZAMP, install that. And once that is installed, uh, just open the control panel of ZAMP or MAMP or whatever server you have. And just make sure that you start these two processes, Apache and MySQL, because MySQL is our database. We'll need a database for what we're doing. And Apache is our server and we'll need a server for what we are doing. All right, this is great. Now we want to design the UI because we want to start. Uh, the UI is the first thing we do. Now, instead of us doing some CSS um, from scratch to speed things up, I'm going to use my own created software, which a link is in the description for where you can use it. It's online and it's free. So if I add an element here. I'll click add element to add an element. Now, of course, if you don't want to go through this whole process of creating the UI, that's fine. You can easily just download the final UI, uh, the template that I'm going to create from here in the link in the description. So don't worry about it in case for some reason you can't access this or you don't want to just go through the trouble. You can always just grab the template from the link. All right. Or Alternatively, you can create your own HTML um, template. You can really use any HTML form or uh, template that you'd like. It doesn't have to be this one. Uh, that's entirely up to you. This will work with any template. All right, so on components here, I'll go to empty. I want to just add a background. Then I'll click on that. Uh, move the properties panel here a little bit. I'll go to the images area. I want to add a background for this just so I can have something in the background. It doesn't have to be, but um, I can add this. I want to look for buildings here. 
Yeah, this can be anything really. I just want something in the background, right? So I'm just going to click on this one maybe. This one is okay. That's fine. So now I want to add a table here. What I really want is two sections here. But first, let's add a title, shall we? So I'll add an element, uh, components, and h1. That way I can add a title. And just say, now this depends on what you are trying to do here. Either these can be customers or they can be employees. That's up to you. So customers or let's use employees since we've made customers before. So that's up to you. Customer, employee. Okay, so employees or customers. Now you can always change the text here, the color text uh, of what you're trying to do here. So let me just add that white and maybe I can also add a background color just so it's a little bit um, visible, a little bit more visible here. And of course I can add some padding if I want to just to actually let's just do more left and right padding here so i'm gonna add a 20 pixels on the left over here now you can center this instead of adding uh, padding by just doing text align center like this then maybe we can add padding top of five pixels and padding bottom of five pixels maybe that's better so you can change anything that you want if you don't like how these things are working here, you can easily just go down to the styles panel and just edit the styles directly here. There's no reason to use these over here if you prefer to just copy and paste some styles in there. That's up to you. So let me move that down a little bit. Now I want to add two sections here. So I'm just going to click the main div, not this one, but the main one and click add element and go to empty. No, I, let me go to grids here and grid type one. I'm going to add that one. Now this has two sections. There's one section here and another one here. So that's great. Now on this one, I want to add a table over here. And here I will add that part with uh, the, the other section here. So if you look at this, each one of these has flex equals one on their styles. So I want this to be twice as large as this one. So I'll click on it and just edit the flex right here and just put a two there like so. And then it goes all the way there, which is awesome. And then this side, now I can add a user card. Now to speed things up, obviously I already have some cards here. So I'll click on cards. There's a user card over there now we can we're going to modify it a little bit so I'll click that and oh oops what has happened I do not know what has happened let me go to the tree so whenever you don't know what has been inserted somewhere just uh, go to the tree and it looks like there are, there's something in there but I just can't see it because the tree here shows me that. So let me close that a little bit. Maybe it's the height that, um, or maybe there's, a, there's something holding it in the section there. So what I could have done is this, let me undo what I did there. Uh, maybe things didn't go well. I'll select the one outside here and then add that element again. Okay, like that. Now, yeah, that's the reason why it wasn't showing because it had this uh, container up here. Now I can select just this part here, the card itself. So you see that card there selected, then I can go to edit and just say maybe copy or cut. But let me just copy for now. Go to this one and say edit paste. And there we go. So we have our card in there. That's awesome. Then I can change this to text align center. Let's see if that centers the thing. It doesn't. So what I'll do instead, I will, I've selected the main thing here, the container of that. I want to center this item. So instead I'll use display flex. So here it's display block, but let's try display flex for that. 
and then what I would do is justify content center like that okay so in here we want to add a table now this thing down here we can now delete so if I select this thing that I added I can delete that so we are back to our usual here so there's a user uh, view here with more details and other things now we don't need followers and following etc uh, etc et so we're going to change a few of these things here this one can be gender instead so I'm just going to type female in there so there's a name there's a gender and maybe some other details like um, let's say maybe uh, address so here I'll change that to um, maybe the phone number something like this and let me change the text font size here mm, let's see if it's changing any font size it doesn't look like it is okay for some reason that isn't working okay there it is now it's working if I put 16 it does work I put 16 there that works okay so phone um, then here maybe we can add address uh, so it's up to you to design how you want this to look like uh, and then here maybe this is a can be a final comment here so you can put as many details as you want uh, for this this button here could be the edit button for example if you want to edit this that's up to you but I don't think we'll be needing it so I'll just delete that there and then this is just some comments so we have uh, the image the first name and last name we have the gender we have phone number so let's just uh, change that to a phone number I'm just typing a random phone number here and then an address could be a bit longer than this so let's let me copy something here and paste there so that we just see how that would look like so street number or something I don't know so that's the information that would come there and uh, great so more details and then a comment over here um so what i could do is copy this right click and say uh copy element and then within the main div here i will paste that and say paste element so it comes at the very end then i'll just right click and move it up like that and then uh, i can say comments like that okay like so okay so you can put these in sequence like phone address comments address phone number so you can add whatever details you want now there's a, a database that's online called Northwind so I just use it for reference okay so there's email address I think that's we can try uh, and put that there let's see address city zip code I'm just using this as reference to see what fields I can add so maybe instead of address here I can put email like so and then so that it's shorter and we say email at email.com like that and then comments then I'm going to select these two and duplicate I'm just going to say edit duplicate and then instead of comments here on this one I will say address yeah and the address is usually shorter than this and then comments down here now you can duplicate this as many as many times as you want to add more um, more items here more fields rather so let me change that to text align send uh, left like that okay so of course design is entirely up to you now on this side I want to add a table so I'll select this section over here and add an element and let's go to 
tables. There's only one here at the moment, but hopefully there will be more. Okay, so the table went over here. I wanted it in here, but for some reason it's down here. No matter, it's okay. So if I select this, I want, it shows me that this element is a table header. I want to select its parent until I get to table. So I can grab the entire table. So I'm going to say edit and select parent. I'll keep clicking on select parent while looking at that side until I, f I reach table over here, right? So now then I can say edit cut element, then select this right here and say edit paste. So now it's in there. Okay, so employees, now we have some fields over here. So we have first name, last, let me change that to name like that. And so you just click in there and start editing the table. Um, you can have age if you want, it's up to you. Age, email, um, but we don't need that here now. So let me just put phone number and email address. So on this one, I don't want to put too many items here. This is just for selecting which record we finally see over here. And I don't want this too large. So I can select that div there, look at the height and just reduce it accordingly. So let me just put, um, oh, this is the image, right? Let me leave it at 150. Let me select its parent, which is a div, select parent. So it's inside a div. Then I can reduce the height of that one. So I just want it on 100 pixels like that. That's a little bit better. So you can always close the properties panel and click there to get it back. All right, so this is what we have here. Phone number, email address. Now we want to be able to select one of these and hover on them as well. So now I want to select the table once again. So I will show the properties panel so I can see when I hit the, the table. So select parent one more time again until I reach table, there it is. So what I wanna change now is the cursor so that the cursor is a pointer. That way when we hover on this, it looks like a hand. And then I want to add one extra row here. So the reason I'm adding an extra row is I want a to have a style for the normal uh, row, which is just normal like this. And then one for the hover effect and the other one for the, um, let's see, for the hover effect and for the selected. Actually, I just need two of these because the hover effect I can add right here without uh, causing any problems really. So for the hover, let's create that hover effect. So I want to select the table row itself. So I'm just gonna go to, um, where is this? Edit, select parent, and then it says TR, which is table row there, that's great. Then I can just say set hover styles. So click that. And that now whatever styles I add, those will only work when I hover on this item. So for example, let's go to background color. Let's change that a little bit like so. Let's make it um, darker like this. Maybe we can put white as the text color like so. At least that's good enough as a hover. Now you can even add transform, um, transform, uh styles here for example if i go to the transform here i could rotate this thing look at that if i try to rotate that look at what happens that's incredible but i don't want to do that i want to scale it a little bit though so or maybe i could translate to the x-axis like so just a little bit translate it maybe by five pixels or maybe 10 pixels just so it's easier to see. Then if you want, you can translate Y. You can scale it up a little bit. If you want, that's up to you, but I'll leave that at zero. Actually, the default is one. Okay, great. So translate X and all that. 
Now, once you're done with your styling, you can change the colors, whatever it is you can change. Once you're done, just untick that and that's it. Now, when I hover on this item, I can see that hover happening. But also, I want to add um, transition to that hover effect, right? So, what can I do? to do that here in the styles this has no styles whatsoever so what i could do instead there's a no object there but what i can do is say um i want to add a transition so i'll say transition full colon or and then uh, the transition, how long should it take? Maybe, uh, I don't know, 0.5 seconds, and then easy ease like that, and put a semicolon at the end like so. All right. So as you can see now, when I hover on it, it's much more subtle. The effect is visible. Okay, great. So we have our table. We have uh, extra details here, so we can always duplicate this to move forward. At least we have that. Now let's add one for the select thingy. Okay, so it seems the hover only works on this one. So we're going to change the styling to that. But let me select this one. And I want to select the parent as well. So select parent, which is the table row. That's great. Now I want to know when this is selected, right? So I'm going to add some styling here. So the first thing I will add is a border. So let's add a thick border around there. Let's put it maybe uh, four pixels, something like this. Let's change the color to a blue so it's very visible what's going on in here. So it's entirely up to you what you colors you choose to show here and add, but that's what it is. So now that will show that this is selected and this is not. So that what, whatever details we're seeing here are the ones that are here. Okay, so then finally we need next page and previous page so we can go between pages. So I'm going to add a component here. So it could components. Actually, not there. It should be inside segments. Where is segments? There it is. Yeah. Save and cancel button. So I'll select that. Okay, so it's on this, uh, which is great. Now this looks like this is a save button. This one is so I want to just copy the styles from this one. I want I want it to be that I can just go to the styles directly and copy all of that except the float right. I don't want it to float to the right. So I'm just going to copy the rest, select this guy and do a little paste over there and then just edit. I will say prev underscore page because you can't put spaces in these buttons for some reason when you're editing here. This is, I guess, a limitation of HTML. I don't know. So we can say next underscore page like that. That's great. And within this um, thing, I want to add something to show me what page number I am on. And also let me duplicate this one. I'll edit and say duplicate Mm-hmm. That's weird though. But no matter. Uh, it's not a big deal. Here I want to put first page so that I can easily go to the first page when I want. I like this. And then I'll select this whole thing. Let me change the display to flex instead of having these things float around. So this one that's floating here, I'll just remove that float right. So it's all over the place there, but that's fine. We select its container. Let's change its display to um, to flex, shall we? So display, flex, and they are all in line like this. Now I want to change the justification of content to space between like so. So there's previous page, there's first page, next page, previous page. So this one I want to move up because I think the order is all messed up. So I'll say move up. Hmm, that really didn't do what I wanted. Let's try and move up again. And there we go. It looks like there's something in here that I'm not quite understanding. So I'll go to the tree 
and let's see this is a div once you hover on this tree it shows you exactly what you're hovering on here so i'll select that let me select something else and select this back so it has three buttons and a div there's a div inside here somewhere at the end here which is irrelevant so if i select that div it's right there i can easily just delete that so we are back here and i can remove the tree i don't need it so first page previous page next page mm. okay so not really what i wanted uh, okay i'll remove how do i do this okay within this let me add a div so i'm just gonna uh grab actually let me copy the same thing so i'm gonna say edit copy element Select something to copy. Okay, I've selected, edit, copy, and then paste it within itself. So I'm going to say edit and paste. Okay. So this is pasted within itself. There's a div here, and I want to move this to the top. So right click, move to the top. So it goes over here. So this first page uh, and Previous page, those are the ones I want in here. So I'll select this one and delete that. That's great. And then here, um, so there's this div, and then I want to duplicate this div one more time. Or instead, what I'll do is select this uh, main thing, add an element, and then go to, where is this, um, components and say div text so i can add some text in there and just say page one like so and then move this up until it gets to the center here so i'm gonna right click on this guy say move up and so i want it between previous page and next page so i don't need this first page i already have it there I have previous page so these guys I can delete and this actually I can delete as well so there we go we have first page previous page page one and next page so what I have is a div here it's a main div which has a smaller div in here that has two of these things and then there's this one div and then there's this next item here but this one doesn't center the item properly so what I would do is I'll change its display to flex as well and say align items center like so. Okay, great. So this is all good. At least we can know what page we are on. We can move to the first page, previous page and next page and then see the user details over here, the complete user details over here. All right, let's see what other... Um, things we can add so like i said here we can add as many fields of the user as we want but this is fine for now okay so now what we need to do is create uh we'll need other pages like the login page we we'll also need a page to add a new user now that page will be on this one so to add and edit and of course delete so here i want to add just an extra um, an extra column here so that i can add the uh, edit and delete buttons from there so what i'm going to do is go to table there's a thing since this is a table just select any item on the table and go to the table editor here which is right there so here you can add a table rows and columns. So there's already five columns. So I just need to, so you have to be careful here. If I press the down key to go down one table, they need to delete this one. So I just want to add one extra column and there it is. So this one, I'm gonna call it action. And in there, I will add um, some icons right so you can add buttons icons let me try icons so add icons here i'll select the people icon like this and i can duplicate this baby edit duplicate okay great so now 
uh, with this, I can now, um, let me select these two, shift select, and let's add some margin. So this margin, I can add margin left and right. So I'll do this. This is an M's, so I think I'll just add one M that should do margin right one M as well. Maybe a bit much, so let's use pixels instead. So let's try five and five pixels there as well. Uh, that should do maybe 10. Yeah, I think that does it uh, very, very well. So you can do text align center in this one if you want, um, or we can use, would it work with margin auto? I'm not sure, but let's click here. Let's go to the images section. Let's change the icon. So I want an edit icon here and it's up to you which one you choose. I'll select that one. This one will be the delete icon. So select any of these uh, bad boys. There it is. So you can also change the colors, of course, the color of the delete should be more red, I guess. The edit, maybe green or something, uh, whatever works, right? So there it is, awesomeness. So with this, now the table data field, I can say text align center to center those two babies. Do the same thing here text align center, and then copy the internals of this. I'll say edit uh, copy element and select this one here and edit paste element. Oopsie daisy. So that didn't go as planned. Looks like, oh, actually it did go as planned. So it's just the hover effect does work just fine. And when I try to click on this, I hope that won't affect it. We can put hover effects on these as well. If I click on that and set a hover effect, I can simply just say color white like so, uh, and then remove that hover effect. So now when I hover on it, it doesn't seem to work at all. Yeah, hopefully it will work when it comes down to it. Let me set that to white and remove that hover effect. So I guess the hover effect that's working is on this thing and not on them. Anyway, regardless, we continue. And uh, this should be all for now. Oh, one more thing is the editing thing. So let's, let's make that. I'll select the main div, add an element and go to the empty section and empty div. So with this, I have this div which I can resize to my liking. Okay, oops. Now if those, uh, my mouse isn't very good. So what I would do is go to height here and just add a height that I want. I don't want a very specific height. So I just put a minimum height of 200 pixels, maybe 300 as a minimum height. Let me remove, let's put the color to black. Let's put the background color to white. Let me add a border so I can clearly see where it is. One pixel like that. Let's use uh, black or gray. That's okay. And I can even put a box shadow. Let's put a box shadow here. Uh, let me just move one of the items here and the, add, the shadow will be added. Let me reduce the brightness of that shadow. Okay, now I want to change the position of this thing. So I'll go to position here, change the position type to fixed. And then let's put the top and left, uh, I'll put 50%, change that to percent. That's for the top the left as well 50 but percent so the thing has moved here but let's add some transform tools as well so i'm gonna go to transform um this is text transform actually not the right thing is transform i'm looking for here 
So I want to change the X and Y to 50, 50 there. Actually, minus 50 and minus 50 on this one. But I want to use percentages. I should have added that there. I will add that as part of the properties. But for now, what I can do is just go down to the uh, styles here where it says 50 translate X translate Y minus 50 pixels. I'll put percentages in there instead like that. This is just to get it to the center of the page. So it's always in the center. Even when I scroll like this, it's always in the center. So this is the thing we're going to use to, uh, to, to add a new user. Now at this point, you might want to save your, your work. So say save, save as, um, let's see, employee, did I say employee? employee list like that and save that way you can always go back in case you make a mistake very good okay so here let's change text align to center let's add an image so image component so i'm just going to grab make sure it's selected add let's go to components where is this component let's add the image you can use the rounded image rounded if you want or the image square uh, I like the square when adding things. You can leave the rounded for that section there, like so. And then I want to add, um, what element can I add here? Um, let me add an input. Where are inputs here? Input, let's add a file input like this. But I don't want to see this, it's not necessary. We're going to hide it. So we go to display uh, and put none there. Select this again and let's add some more inputs this time. So we have a first name, last name. Um, we have gender. So add an input field. Then next I will add a selector. And then finally I will add a text area like so okay so this one I will edit I'll say first name okay so it's gone to two lines but I can always click this and expand it let's see select that and do some expansion so it's one line if you prefer that uh, everything here looks like it's text it's aligned in a specific in the center as is this so i can select this and say maybe i can just say text align here but otherwise actually the better thing to do is just add a div let's go to empty add an empty div in there let me remove the width of that div so it oops that was uh, not great. I had selected the wrong thing. So I'll put 500 width on this one. That's all right. I'll select this one and remove that width. So it's like that. Also the height, I think I can remove that height. Just put a minimum height of 100 pixels so you can always see it. Then I can select these babies. Yeah. And then say edit. I don't know why I put the properties panel above the menu items. So cut those elements, select this one and paste them in here instead. Okay, that way we can set the text align to left on this thing and then change the color to black, remove its background color and we are good to go. All right, so with this one, first name, then I can duplicate it. First of all, let me select this. You can put placeholders here if you want. Um, let's go. If we go to input here, I can put placeholder and say first name and even a name there would be first underscore name, right? This one is gender. So let's uh, put gender. Actually, we may not need this entirely. 
because the select here we can just put say select gender so it will be very visible here we can add comment let me move this a bit let me duplicate this one in fact the input here the name is common comment yes uh, same as placeholder comment then I duplicate this so edit duplicate so instead of comment here let's put address uh, same as placeholder as well so if I select this placeholder let's put uh, address and address here on the name as well okay great so address comment mm, here let's put singular comment and then there's email and there's phone number so these I would duplicate from this one so put that there edit duplicate 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 okay a few times so I'll edit this we'll move it to the top a bit later so I put last name here I'll change that to email and what else last name email comment I think that's more than enough this one I can delete okay so let me move this whole thing right click let me just say move to the top and then move down so that it's here now same thing here I think it's quicker to move it to the top and then right click move down move down mm -hmm. okay now let's change those placeholders to make sure so say email the name as well email um, last name let's change that to last name and placeholder as well last name this one I will select um, the name of it will be gender uh, we don't need a placeholder for this so that's cool all right so we have our image we have first name last name email so here you can put whatever fields you want this is just an example so it's all good we add we'll be using the same thing for editing here we'll be selecting which user and here we'll be seeing the final details of the user so let me just enlarge this a little bit let me go to the width of it here let's go to width uh, let me put that maybe 400 pixels maybe a percentage is better here so let's try 90 percent hmm. then I can remove the border radius if I go to border radius I can just click to remove that that way it's square select this div as well remove border radius doesn't seem to have let me select the image doesn't seem to have so let's select the pa its parent so say edit select parent that's uh, no it hasn't done that so edit select parent okay let me select it again edit select parent okay there we go it said div it says div that's great it does have border radius so let me remove those so yeah I'll remove them individually like that righty then so this is great actually this is great now if you want these things to be transparent like this to show the background so select this main thing here behind and let's go to the background color I will uh, remove the background color like that okay and then go to this one as well let's see let me just copy the background color before I remove it just in case I don't like when I remove it but I think I do like it okay great now you could make the background a little bit blurry by going to here and saying um, what can I say here backdrop 
dash filter full colon put blur and let's put something like five pixels close that let's see does it even show it does show you can't see it yet but you would see it when there's enough so i'm copying this again what i have done here the backdrop filter and putting it on the other one as well here paste once there's enough uh records it will clearly show that the background is being blurred by the uh, by this thing here anyway let me close that let's have a look now this guy here if i select the tree where is the tree okay if i select the tree it will show me where this um the div for this thing is this is the one here this one right here for the uh, for this part here so i can hide this if i want so i can see what's in the back so it's right there and let me go to properties and let's just say display uh, we can put none there but i think for now we'll leave it be because i don't want to have to edit the um to edit the classes so let me close that tree okay so this is the ui that we've generated let's save finally save complete that's great so once we've saved now we can create the login page instead let me just make sure it has saved properly by just opening another instance of this and say open page employee list and there it is okay so that's great it's done now i want us to have a login page so i'm going to refresh the page to create a new a new project then just add uh, an element and let me go to logins where is logins and right here we already have these logins so you can just select which one you want can be this one or I've, i made this uh in a different tutorial you can check that out or let's see let's open a not opening let me just refresh the page let's add an element let's go to logins let's add this one so it's entirely up to you you can use this one you can use the other one let me just select this one maybe try to use it because it's much simpler i'm going to add uh, go to the properties to where there's images i just want to change this image to an illustration instead so let me look for somebody a cartoon that looks like it's about to log in or something i don't know maybe this one for data um i don't know what looks like a login thingy here any of these will do just fine but let's see hmm i'm not even sure let me let me add this one okay that's okay there let me change this one as well looks to um corporate let me just add, try and add um, something that looks like data processing or something that's what i'm looking for uh, or employee management whatever yeah something like this login page great that's for the login and sign up we can use exactly this uh, the only thing is for the sign up though we may need to add a no actually this is fine so login we'll just change that to a sign up so as well let's save this ad let's save this one as employees list login page or something like that let's save that okay cool so once you're done with this you can now export these just go file download and the download process will begin and then you have a zip file uh, that has your project so once you do that you can also open the other project the employees list and then download this as well so download boom and you have those two 
uh, zip files. So if you just copied the zip files, then this is the point at which you will have downloaded these and you can extract them to a folder. So let's do that now so that we can start actual PHP now. So this is the process where we start our PHP. So make sure that you have started your ZAMP uh, control panel and you've started Apache and MySQL because those need to be running for the next things that we are doing, which is PHP. So the first thing we want to do is create ourselves a database because of course we want to be able to add this information. So the database will have the employees list and we'll have two tables, the employees and then the users that are going to be doing uh, the management here. So in order to go to to view this, just go to your browser and open localhost slash PHP my admin. This is where your database lives. If this says page not found, please make sure you've started Apache or MySQL both at the same time. And then once you get here, just click on new at the top here to create a new database. So let's name our database employees don't put any capital letters here it just creates confusion so let's say employees underscore list underscore db so don't put any spaces there just say employees uh, underscore list db now you can name your database anything this is just me so let's create that and now we have a database so if i look here i will see it in the list so of course yours won't have as many databases as i have here that's because i do so many tutorials that's the only reason why i have so many so yeah employees list db here and now it'll ask you to create some tables so let's create one table called users number of columns here you can put whatever you want really what we are looking for is just a way for, this is for the users to sign in so they just need their email they are signing in with maybe their username and their password so really very few things so four columns should do just fine let's do go let's add an id because we need that primary key make sure you tell it to auto increment and make sure it's selected as the primary key primary index so this is <clears throat> this will be managed by the database it will add an id automatically let's for the people that are logging in to use this let's just use an email and a password that's probably enough we don't need more than that but you can add more columns if you want um actually it looks like there's enough space so let's add username there something like this okay so in the email let's variable character for all of these and this remains as an integer that's fine email let's give it a length of 100 characters password 255 username it depends how big the usernames will be let's put 50 characters there and then let's hit save so once you do that you have a database now we'll be using email to log in so let's add an index to it so it's easier to find and that's roughly about it so now if we click browse here we see that we have a table just like an excel spreadsheet that's empty here no information yet but let's add one more table so right here on employees list you can click on it again and um, uh, create table you can add an extra one this one will be employees under oh just employees now this will need um, all these fields here that we are adding so one two three four five six right is it the same here one two three four oh i forgot the phone here that's that's the one i forgot right now i remember that's why i had created that extra one okay so we can always extract this back but it's okay i'll show you how to add an extra thingy here an extra one when we need it in case you missed it when creating it here or if you have a template that doesn't really have everything you need you can always extend it so we need one two three four five six seven 
we could have even put a date if we wanted to hmm. but that's okay um yeah maybe let's add a date so eight rows plus the id that makes nine so let's put nine here and let's hit go so there we go we have id of course it has to be auto increment and it automatically add primary key so let's do first underscore name this one is a variable character maybe 30 characters that's up to you let's put 30 on the next one variable character as well variable character here let's copy first name and put it here change it to last name all right and uh, let's put one for email let's put one for uh, address actually let's start with these ones that have a limit let's put phone number there and uh, what else let's go back here phone email gender there we go let's put gender uh, then we have uh, address and comment uh -huh. so address comment and finally the date when this user was added so here we'll put select this as date time comment variable character just like address variable character here let's put 2048 characters same as here 2048 so they can comment and put an address well the gender maybe variable character as well let's just put six since female the uh, longest is six let's put variable character for the phone i don't know how many digits your phone number is let's just put 10 there in email let's put 100 and uh, that's practically it so so you can add as many fields as you need just put their data type in there and that's it really on the users list here we won't be searching for users specifically but we could actually but we won't in this case so we won't be needing any uh, other indices apart from the id really so we're not going to be searching for any of these it's just a simple thing so this is it for our table so we have employees lists uh, database in the database we have two tables employees and users so with this in mind we just need a way now to connect to the database and start adding information to it so let's open a new tab so we can start our project so what we're going to do is let me grab those items we downloaded the zip files that we downloaded the login page and the actual list let's go to c zamp ht docs and in here is where you put your uh, this is where you put your um, websites sorry now i made a folder called templates in here in ht docs so as long as it's inside ht docs that's fine or it could be the ww folder on your depending on the server that you're using so in here i can create another um folder here which will be called employees and then this is where i will paste my content so you don't need to create the templates folder you can just have hddocs slash employees that's fine but or you can do it this way that's fine as well so let me extract to each separate folder so we have two folders now which means I do not need these zip files anymore, so I can delete them. Then now I can go to, let's say, the login page. If I click on the HTML, you see this is the login page. Great, right? If I go back to employees and go to the list here and click the HTML file, it will load the design that I created. Okay, so we have those two things. Very good. Now, all we need to do is open a text editor. Now, you can use any text editor of your choice, including Notepad. Just don't use a text editor like Microsoft Word or, Not, uh, or WordPad or something that has formatting. 
So I'll be using Sublime Text. You can use VS Code. You can use Notepad++. Preference is entirely up to you. So what I want to do is load my folder, the employees folder into my text editor so I can start doing stuff. So I have opened Sublime Text here, which I will be using. And I'm just going to drag my folder into Sublime Text like so. That way I can see my things here. You don't have to do this, but it's just easier to bring files in like this. And now what I want to do is separate these things into uh, pages, right? So let me go back to the folder uh, a little bit here. So normally how these things work is we have separate pages, the, um, the login page and the each page is just separate. But the thing is, we have assets in here for both, and the file names are exactly the same. So if I put these in the same folder, because I do want to put them in the same folder, I'm going to have some trouble because it will replace. So really what I need, for example, in the uh, employees folder here, it's the assets and the HTML file. So let me cut those two and paste them here, like so. So we have this thing and that thing that came in. So the index file, uh, I'll rename this to a PHP file, but we'll do that from the text editor so that you can see the file extension in case you don't have this set properly. So I'm going to change the assets folder to a different name. So I'm going to rename it. Instead of just assets, I'm going to say Oh, let me rename that again. I'm going to say assets index like that so that we know that those are the assets for the index page. Now, once I do that, if I try to open this, the CSS is all lost, but that's fine. We're going to fix that. And let me do the same thing for the login page. Um, also, this is the index page. So let me go to the login page. I'll rename this one here. Uh, let me rename it as login like that and then move the assets folder as well that will cut those out actually and paste them here and then the assets folder again I will rename that to assets login just so that we know which assets belong to which page now these two are now empty folders so I'm just going to delete those two like that now back to the text editor uh, I'll rename these files from HTML to PHP files. So .php, remove the fire extension. Same thing here, rename. Let's do .php like that. Great. Alrighty then. So now I just need to change the references of these files. Now the first thing I'll do is I want to load them into my browser. So now they're index uh, HTML pages. So I'm going to go to my browser, click a new tab. And then just uh, let me start with the login page. That's what we're going to start with. So I'm going to go here. And uh, actually, I'm, I want to go to the to the browser. That's where I want to go and drop it here. So there it is, not looking too hot there, that's fine. But I want us to use, to load, this is being loaded through the file system, but I want us to load through our server. So we have to change uh, the link to include our server name in there. So everything up to htdocs here, before slash template, just templates and below will be changed to localhost like that because that's our server name. So now we are routing our file through the server so it can actually process the PHP. So once you do that, that's great. But our CSS still isn't working and that's okay. If I click on the login here, we just need to change the reference of the assets folder. So every reference of asset slash like this, let me select that, control D, to select all instances of it. Then use the arrow right arrow key to move around or left arrow key put an underscore and say login like that because that's a folder name so we're just changing the folder name there and if i now refresh 
it looks as it should. So in the same vein, if I want to go to the index.php page, I'll just do index.php or if I just remove any reference there, it will go automatically. So there it is. Now, if I go to the index, same thing again, I will change the assets folder, every reference of it to say underscore index assets underscore index and save that file. So if I get back this time, the CSS is active. Okay, awesomeness. So now the first thing we have to do is make sure that if somebody is not logged in on the em employees page, they should be moved to the login page. That's the first thing we should do. So in our index.php here, we're going to go at the top here and add some PHP tags so that we can put some brains to this page. So it's not just dumb, it has some PHP to run in it. So to check that your PHP has worked, we're just going to echo the word here like that. And let's go back and refresh. And if you can see here at the top there, then things are working. If you see the actual code, then something is wrong with how you've, um, your server isn't working properly here. So you have to make sure the link is correct in there. And you have actually started your server here Apache by clicking start and by SQL there. Good. Okay, so the first thing is we're going to create now some PHP files. So I'm just gonna right click on the employees. Uh, let's create a new folder so that we are organized well. So new folder. This one is going to be, uh, will we need this? No, probably not. I think we won't need a new folder since it's just one file. Let's just say new file here. Let's put some PHP tags. This is going to be the functions file. So it's a functions.php. Now this is the file we're going to include everywhere on every page. So here I'm just going to say require. This file is required and say functions.php like so. That way it's loaded on top of every page. It runs first before every page is run. In here, we will put some cool stuff. First of all, let's start our session because we want to be using sessions. Sessions are, a session is just a variable. There's a session variable that stores information that lasts longer than the life cycle of a single page. So even if you switch your page to another page, the information remains in the session and you can always move information from one page to another. We use that uh, to check if the user is logged in or not. Uh, that way we don't have to ask the user to log in on every single page. So let's create a function called uh, logged in. This is a question we'll be asking if the user is logged in or not. For now, let's return false. We just say, this will return true or false. Now we're going to return false just to test it. So what I will do is in the index page, wherever page that you want uh, to make sure the user is logged in. Uh, what we're going to do is redirect that user if they're not logged in. So we just ask the question if logged in. Now we know it's going to return false, right? So which means this will be false. And then all we need to do is redirect the user. So this is how we redirect the user by using the header, changing the header and location, and then saying, yeah, we send them to the login page, login.php like so. And then we tell the script to die here. Now having to type this every time is hectic. So what we'll do is we're just gonna copy this baby here. In fact, I'll copy everything here. Go to functions. Let's create a redirect function. So I'm going to move this baby here. Let's just call this one uh, function redirect. And in here, we'll give it a path, right? We'll expect a path as a string. So I'll copy this. You can actually do this to be more strict. You say string path so that when you're expecting a string like this. But let's not go there. I'll paste this here, the path like so. Uh, you can do that. Make sure you are using double quotes here, otherwise this won't work. 
uh, like so. Let me actually do this to make sure it knows this is a, um, a variable over there. Okay, so the redirecting, we do it from here. So all we need to do is replace what we had put there, which is just login. That's the only thing. So to the page that we want to redirect to. So we receive that path, which is just the word login, and then it will be replaced here, which will make it login.php, right? So back to the index page. Instead of doing all this, we just call the redirect function we just created. And in here, just tell it where we want to redirect to. Like so, much easier. So let's test this out. Let's go to our page. We are on the index page. So if I refresh now, um, it doesn't redirect me for some reason. So let's go back and find out why. So the first thing we have to do is let's echo to make sure that we are getting to this point. Oh, actually, my bad. I know why it's not working. Here we have to say if not logged in, because logged in, if it's returning false, so it's not going through here. So you say if not logged in, then redirect, which makes sense. So now if I refresh, it's taking me to the login page. Now on the login page, I forgot to ask the question. Uh, forgot password or not forgot password though. Let me just put another div here and put a link, right? An A tag, href, like so. And then close that link. So in here, we'll say sign up, which will lead to the sign up page. So this one will be sign up php and that's where it will lead to so here we'll ask the question don't have an account and then sign up here right like so so if i now refresh this is what i have don't have an account sign up here now of course the sign up you won't put this if this is for your company, for example, and you want to be the only one that's adding users to the list. So all you have to do is just uh, make sure that the sign up page is only accessible to people who are logged in. So you log in first as the first user, then you put this uh, thing here to check if you're already logged in in order to access the sign up page. That way, only people who already use the software can add new users. So that's up to you depending on what you want. So let's click here for the sign up page. And of course the page is not found because it isn't there. So all we need to do is just make a copy of the login page, right click on employees, new file, paste, save. And all we have to do is now call it signup.php. Make sure we are saving as all files and save. Okay, so now when we go back and refresh, it exists, but it still says login. So let's edit a couple of things. So employees list, let's change all references of login, not those, just this one to sign up. And let's go down here to this one as well. Let's change that to sign up. Uh -huh. And we want the e username uh, let me duplicate this a couple of times. We want the email as well. So this one should be email, actually. But let's say user name. Let's name this one as email. Uh, I didn't change the names for this one. Password. Okay. Okay, just something simple here. So we can get going. So we want our username, email, and password here. Okay, so the password doesn't actually show the password, uh, but that's okay. Okay, so there we go. You can remove that by just changing it to a text type. Then there's a password there. Maybe we should do that. Instead of type password, let's put it a type text since we are signing up. Okay, so now we are ready to sign up. Now on the sign up, we can ask the thing and say already, already have an account and we change that to login and say login here. All right, so back here, 
So if you already have an account, you go to the login page. If you don't, you go to the sign up page. Simple and straightforward. But if we try to go to the index page, we are redirected to the login page instead, which is great. So to sign up, we need to have this as a form so it can actually submit something. So it is indeed a form. So that's great. So at the top here, I want us to add exactly what we added here. Based, All right? Now we don't redirect anyone here. I just need the functions.php page. And then what we want to do is check if the server is running the request method of the server underscore method is post, which means something was posted, uh, which means if something was posted on this page, someone wants to sign up. So if that happens, we want to grab the information from the post. So the first thing we want to grab is the username. Now we can do this and say errors is equal to an empty array like that. And then here we ask if empty errors. Then we save to database over here. Now in order to save to a database, we're going to create a query which is just a string that we use to tell the database what we want to do. So here we want to insert into a specific table called users. And what we want to save are certain columns here, uh, namely the username, uh, the email, and the password. And I'm going to copy this then we tell it what values we want to add in these columns. So I'll paste that to repeat myself. Then I'll just put uh, single quotes around these guys and then convert these to variables by putting a dollar sign on each one of them like that. So all we're doing it, we're telling it to insert inside these three columns and add for each column, you have to match these columns to the value like that. So once we have that query, we can now run it. So we're going to create a function called query that will be running queries like so. So as soon as we do that, that's fine. Then now we can redirect the user to the index page, right? Like so. But actually, no, let's redirect the user to the login page so they can log in once more. Okay. So, but if we do get errors here, I want to see the errors here. Now, the problem is I didn't put any message, uh, something to show messages here, but that's okay. We can still do that after this point. I'll just add a div like that. Here, I want this to display all the errors if there are any. So I'll do PHP like that and close the PHP tag. And I'm just going to say if not empty errors, if the errors are not empty, then let's, um, let's echo an implosion of, um, let's do this an implosion of this array, like so. So implode, what it does is it grabs an array and converts it to a string. And then it tells you here what character you should add between those items. And I just want to put a break tag so that all those errors are one after the other, like this. So, so far, so good. We shouldn't see any errors yet like that. So that's great. That way, if in case I had an error, for example, I had an error for the uh, email part, which may say something like maybe invalid email, something like that, then it wouldn't go here and uh, it would show up on the page. So let's try that. If I try to submit, 
uh, undefined variable on line 14. Where is that? Uh, okay, if empty errors, oh, sorry, I put error there instead of errors. So if I post this like that, you see the error here, it says invalid email. And we could make it more spicy by uh, changing the text color. So let me add style and say color uh, red like that, red. That way when I try to sign up, it says invalid email, something like that. So that's the purpose of this section uh, over here. So what I want to do now is let's give it a check and see. So first of all, let's assign email to the one that was posted email like so. Okay, so I'm going to assign all of these three email. Um, let me grab both of those username. And let's grab a password just as well. Like that. Okay. Uh, very good. So let me see what columns I may be missing here. Let's go to the users. Is there a date? Uh, no date. Okay, so just email, username, and password. That's fine. Okay, so with these, you can put if statement to check if they are valid or not. For example, the email, I can just say if filter var like that. And this is how you use PHP to filter, to check if an email is valid or not. Filter uh, validate underscore email like that. Okay. So if this is not right, so we're going to say if not correct, then that's what we do. We're going to say invalid email. And also for the username, you can check for things like um, uh, if there are numbers in there, for example, then you reject the username. So you can do something like uh, say if uh, pregmatch like that. So we say if not preg much, for example, let's add a pattern here. The pattern is A to Z and capital A to capital Z. Those are acceptable. You can put spaces if you want, uh, but just make sure you put the plus sign here and dollar sign and then the carrot over here like so. Let's put those slashes uh, like that to create the pattern. And then here we'll do um, username like so and let's remove that like this okay so this error goes for the username which is wrong here uh, invalid so here you can tell people that um, username can only have letters and spaces something like this so yeah, you can also check for the length of the password. I have a tutorial on how to validate forms. Just search on my channel for form validation and you can get it there. So if everything is good, it should submit like this. But now we don't actually have this query function. So let's create that query function so things can work out well. So what I'm going to do is go to functions here and let's run the let's create function query. And we expect a string called query. All right. And also we need to connect to the database. So I don't want to keep connecting all the time, every time I read from the query, but actually I can, since I'll be reading only once. So that's fine. So con is equal to mysqli connect. So to connect, we put in our host name, which is localhost, and the username is root, and our password is an empty string like that. But if you're using mump on a Mac, it could be root. So try that. And then the, uh, the database name is employees list underscore db 
like that. Okay, so we'll put an if statement here just in case it fails to connect. Uh, then we'll say if it fails, we'll say die failed to connect like that. Let's put an exclamation point here. Let's see if it fails. So once we try to run that query, we can see uh, once we get to this point, it means everything went well. So what I'm going to do is just run the query now. So we're going to say result is equal to uh, my SQ, my SQLI query. So we put the connection and then we put the query that we want to run like that. So if the result came back positive, then what we can do now is, uh, let's see here. Here I'll say if not is Boolean result, right? If there is a positive result, which is not a Boolean, um, hmm. And my SQL I num rows result is greater than zero. So if there are some results from there. Now, normally when we're just saving data, we won't get to this point. This is only for when we are reading data and we want to read from the database. So in this case, we're going to use a while loop and use row is going to be equal to my SQLI fetch. Let's fetch an associative array. So we'll use fetch a sock for associative array from the result like that. So while there is a result, we're going to put inside res the row, whatever the current row is. So here I will create an array called res just to keep the results from there. And then here I'll say return the result like that. However, if there was no results, we're just gonna return false like so. Okay, so that's our, basically our query function. And if you put this uh, database, this item on the server, a live server, you have to change these and to the username and passwords that you add there, etc. Okay, so let's give it a shot here, but let's go back to the signup page though. Uh, when we get here, if we everything is approved, we want to encrypt the password. So I'm just gonna say password here is equal to password hash so that we encrypt it. The string we're encrypting is password and we'll leave it at password default like so. All right, so let's give it a shot and see if we're going to get a result here. So, back to employees list, where is my project? Right there. Let's open that. So let me try to sign up. It says invalid email, username can only be letter to, letters and spaces also. And I'll put email at email.com and the password will just be password like that. And then hit sign up. So it seems everything went well. If I go to my table and click browse, I see that I have saved uh, email and password and username, which is awesomeness. That's good. Now I just need to be able to log in because at this point, if I try to go to the index page, still I'm redirected back to the login page. So this is all great. Let me just grab what I have done here on the sign up and put it on the login as well, right at the top there. And save. Now this page is not being recognized as PHP. So just go to the bottom right and select PHP, the language there. Okay, so here what we need is username and password. That's all we are getting. So username, password. We're not gonna, okay, we will check for some errors, that's fine. We're not going to validate anything here at all. 
what we're going to do instead is try to read from the database, right? So here, I just don't want this to pass, so I'll put a false and, okay. So I want to grab a row from the database using the query function and put a query in there like so. And then I'm going to say, if the row comes back as positive, like that, then we are good to go. Okay, here we will check for password. So first we look for the email and then we check for the password. So let's create the query that can check for the email. So we're going to say query is equal to, we select all columns from users where the email column is equal to a specific email that the user put there. We'll say limit one result like that. If row came back positive, it's going to be an array. So we're going to say row is equal to just grab the first item from that array, which is the first result. Okay. And then we check for the password. So how we check for the password is we use the function password verify as opposed to password hash. So that password is the one that the user has just typed in and then the hash is the one that comes from the database. So that's the hashed version in there. So if the password verification went well, then everything is good. Otherwise, we will put some errors, right? So let's do errors. We'll just call this one email. Wrong email or password. We don't want to tell the user which of the two is wrong for security reasons. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. And then here, if everything is good, let's redirect to the index page, right? Wrong email or password. Now here, if we don't get a row here, same thing here, we're just gonna say wrong email or password because the email is wrong here. Here the password is wrong. Here everything went well. All right, so that is great. Now, if everything went well, we have to authenticate the user. So let's go back to functions and just create a function that can do that. We're just gonna call it oath for short. And here we will supply the row of the user. And all we want to do is add the row of the user into the session and we will use the, uh, we'll call the location of that uh, thing session user is equal to row, whatever row was given. That's it, that's what we do, we authenticate. That way we can just check in the session to see if this exists, then we know the user is logged in. Now you can give this a different name, of course, depending on your website, whatever name you would like, so that it's different uh, to your other projects, for example. So back to the login here, I would just say auth and put the row in there like that and that should be good. And then if I go back to functions, to check if we are logged in, we all need to check if this is not empty, that's all. So we'll say if not empty, this, right, then return true, otherwise return false. All right, and that does it. So now if I go to the login, and let's check this out and try it out, yeah. Now, if there are errors, we should see them. So I'm just gonna copy what I did here. Copy that in the login page above class six and paste it over there like uh, this. Okay, good. So if I try now to log in, it says, um, email and password undefined. Okay, so here we just make sure our inputs do have those names. This one should be email. This one should be named password. Okay, great. So let's refresh that page and try to log in. It says wrong email or password. 
let's try this email let's try this a different password it still says the same thing i'll try email and the correct one which is password and click in there login and now you can see we are allowed to be on the index page which is extremely awesome okay now let's hide this input here for if for a start so i'm going to go down to the index page here where there is this part i think it's the one right there and i'm going to add a class called hide which i will create right at the top here i will add some styles and add a class dot hide like that and just say display none that way whichever item has that class will not appear and as simple as that okay awesomeness let's remove these underscores here where is this next page previous page and next page here okay there it is very cool so employees etc etc and more information over here now here i think i can put some break tags after address uh, i'll put some hr tags uh, let's see here where am i putting this this is the wrong place i want to put it right at the top of this one and right at the top of that one and see how those look eh, maybe not so good you can change their opacity so they look by adding a style and say opacity 0 0.2 something like this all right very cool okay so now we begin the process of adding information viewing information and delete which is called crud create read update delete and we're gonna do that in the next video